Okay, so I'm going to read through um, 70 um, apparent contradictions in the King James Bible. And I'm going to read through them uh, 10 at a time or 9 at a time. So I'll, I'll read through 10 of them right now. Okay, so number one, does God incite David to conduct the census of his people in 2 Samuel 24.1, or does Satan in 1 Chronicles 21.1? God's anger was kindled against Israel because of their sin. David also sinned, being provoked of the devil, and God used David's disobedience to bring judgment upon Israel. In the story, David said, Even I it is that have sinned and done evil indeed. But as for these sheep, what have they done? Nevertheless, God knew that what his people had done. Thus God moved David against Israel, not because God authored sin, but because God's anger was kindled against his own people. In summary, God used Satan's oppression and David's sin to bring about his will. As a result, Israel was punished, and David was chastened when forced to behold the judgment that fell upon his own people. Okay, apparent contradiction number two. Second Samuel 24.9 gives the total population for Israel as 800,000, whereas First Chronicles 21.5 says it was a million and a hundred thousand. Uh... The account in this book of Samuel specify, specifically reads of valiant men, whereas the account in the book of Chronicles refers to all they of Israel. A simple word study of valiant will conclude that these were mighty men, the elite of the army. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 18, chapter 31, verse 12, 1 Chronicles 5, 18, and 2 Chronicles 13, 3. Hence Samuel records the number of valiant men, while Chronicles gives the sum total of men. Apparent contradiction number three, 2 Samuel 24.9 gives the round figure of 500,000 fighting men in Judah, which was 30,000 more than the corresponding item in 1 Chronicles 21.5. The previous question, uh, number two, provides a precedent for this one. The account in Samuel may include the sum total of men, whereas the account in Chronicles includes only the men that drew sword. The valiant men would have been able to do more than just use a sword. They were men able to bear buckler and sword, and to shoot with bow, and skillful in war, First Chronicles 5.18. It is also possible that the amount in Samuel is merely the rounded figure to the nearest hundred thousand. Simply put, critics must believe by faith that this is an absolute contradiction. For those that believe every word of God is pure, Proverbs 35, the above possibilities provide a very feasible answer to the discrepancy. Apparent contradiction number four, Second Samuel 24.13 mentions that there will be seven years of famine, whereas First Chronicles 21.12 mentions only three. I believe the answer actually lies in the precise wording of each passage. The account in Chronicles reads, Thus saith the Lord, Choose thee either three years famine, therefore we know this is what God said from the mouth of his prophet. The account in Samuel reveals that what God had told Gad to tell David, Gad came to David came to David and told him, Thus it is implied here that Gad said, Choose thee either three years famine, just as he did in Chronicles. However, for whatever reason not expressly revealed, the book of Samuel declares that God told David and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in thy land? For whatever reason Gad altered the word of God at some point in the conversation between Gad and David. It is possible that there had already been four years of famine. Notice in Second Samuel twenty four one that the Bible reads, and again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Apparently God had already been angry with Israel prior to this point. This may be a reference to Second Samuel twenty one one, only three chapters prior. When there was a famine in the days of David three years year after year, while David took care of this cause of the cause of this famine, it is quite possible that another year of this famine continued during that time, the time that David numbered the people. As a result, four years of famine would have already taken place. Hence, Gad told David about the option of the three years of famine and could have later emphasized the fact that the land had already suffered four years of famine. In other words, this could have, gone, could have been Gad's way of encouraging David to choose another form of judgment. God, who cannot lie, is telling us honestly what Gad really told David at some point in time, for, for as much as every word of God is pure, Proverbs 35. Was Ahaziah 22, 2 Kings 8, 26, or 42, 2 Chronicles 22, 2? 
when he began to rule over Jerusalem. Ahaziah was most likely 42 years old when he began to reign in Jerusalem. While both verses declare that Ahaziah reigned one year in Jerusalem, it is quite obvious that he wasn't both ages while he reigned, that one year in Jerusalem. Each writer writing from God must be writing from two different perspectives. The younger age is probably the age Ahaziah began to reign, but not as king. This reign would have begun under his father, who was the king in Jerusalem at the time. The older age would then be the age that Ahaziah began to reign, as king in Jerusalem. The subsequent passages of scripture support this. A. In 2 Kings 15.5, Jotham, the king's son, was over the house, judging the people of the land. Even though his father was, was still alive as king, King Uzziah did not die immediately from his leprosy, so his son had to fulfill some of his father's kingly duties. B. In 2 Chronicles 11.22, King Rehoboam made Abijah uh, his son to be the chief ruler among his brethren because he thought to make him king. Hence we see the custom that custom of that day insomuch as a son could begin to rule under his father in preparation for the future reign as king. And see, lastly, as in First Kings 16.23, we see that Omri began to reign over Israel twelve years. This means that Omri began the twelfth year of his reign here. If there were not a comma prior to 12 years, then this would mean that Omri began to reign for tw 12 years, but this does not coincide with si chapter 16, verse 28 and 29. He began his 12th year, and then six years reigned he in Terza. Why the switch to Terza in his 12th year? At this time in history, Terza was not of the capital city of the northern kingdom of Israel, just as Jerusalem was for the southern kingdom. This is when Omri must have begun as king to reign over all Israel in Tirzah. 1 Kings 15.33 In summary, God must be telling the truth from two different perspectives. Critics are forced to believe by faith that this is an absolute contradiction. They cannot prove that the aforementioned passages are not precedents for the discrepancy of the scripture I believe that every word of God is pure. Proverbs 35. Okay, apparent contradiction number six. Was Jehoiakim 18, 2 Kings 24, 8, or 8, 2 Chronicles 36, 9, when he began king, became king of Jerusalem? See question number five. Um, okay, contradiction number seven. Uh, according to the author, did Basha the king of Israel die in the 26th year of King Asa's reign, 1 Kings 15.33, or was he still alive in the 36th year, 2 Chronicles 16.1? For every word of God is pure, Proverbs 35, then both passages are correct. The difference here must be the perspective of the writer writing from God. The lesser year could be the year of Asa's reign as king in Jerusalem, while the greater year, the sum total of Asa's reign, which would include the number of years that he ruled under his forefathers in Jerusalem, C.5. This type of numbering is not uncommon even in the very same book of the kings. Example A, 2 Kings 15, 30 through 33. Example B, 2 Chronicles 21, 20 through 22. Uh, 2 Chronicles 21, verse 20 through chapter 22, verse 2. Either the writers were absurdly contradictory, or God has truly kept his promise. When comparing scripture with scripture, it becomes quite apparent what is not meant. Hence, the above-mentioned response provides a very feasible answer. Apparent contradiction number eight. Did King Jehoiakim rule over Jerusalem for three months, 2 Kings 24.8, or for three months and ten days, 2 Chronicles 26.9? Critics must believe by faith that this is an absolute contradiction of the Bible. For those who believe every word of God is pure, Proverbs 35, the, the book of Kings obviously records the amount to the nearest month. If Jehoiakim reigned three months and ten days, then, the, then he evidently reigned for three months. We still speak in this manner today. Apparent contradiction number nine. Did the chief of the mighty men of David lift up his spear and kill 800 men, 2 Samuel 23, 8, or only 300 men? 1 Chronicles 11, 11. 
I really believe that the writers are writing from God the truth regarding two separate instances. A critic may charge me as being a fool for the so-called blind faith, but just how foolish would the critic be if the word of God were true? Even under conjecture, if the Bible were true, the honest critic would be forced to confess that he or she would be playing the fool. The difference merely lies within the person's faith. Critics are, and professed atheists do not believe the Bible, whereas I believe wholeheartedly that every word of God is tr pure. Proverbs 35. And apparent contradiction number 10. Was Noah supposed to bring two pairs of all living creatures, Genesis 6, 19, and 20, or was he to bring seven pairs of clean animals, Genesis 7 and 2, 9, 2 and 9? Genesis 6, 19, and 20 clearly defines what the two of every sort is, the male and female. God told Noah that two of every sort shall come unto thee. Why? To keep them alive. There are two here. The two here are the male and the female so that they could reproduce. In Genesis 7-2, 7, God tells Noah to take the clean animals by sevens, the male and his female. In other words, Noah was to take the male and the female, two of the clean animals, seven times. Those animals were not clean. Those animals that were not clean, he was to take only by two, the male and his female, just one pair. Again, Genesis 7-9 reiterates this. There went in two and two unto, Noah's, unto Noah into the ark, the male and female. Accordingly, if the animals were unclean, only one pair was brought in. If the animals were clean, seven pairs were brought in. This is no contradiction, only critics fumbling over words out of a predisposition to find fault. Okay. Hope that you learned some things from these apparent contradictions being explained. Thanks for watching. God bless.